Today, I wanna to share my animation workflow and also just talk about the importance of finding a workflow that fits you and how you actually like to animate. So a few weeks ago, I gave myself the goal of coming up with an animating a simple two hit combo attack in less than eight hours. It ended up taking me about six and a half hours and I actually did a quick like minute long breakdown video of that process to kind of show my workflow. But now I just wanna go a little bit more in depth into my workflow and also just talk about why I animate the way that I do. So while I was learning in school and then also working, I stuck with a stepped pose to pose approach to all my animation. And I think the main reason for that is just that was the way I was taught. That's typically how you're taught to animate. So you sort of just animate in whatever way you were taught to. But it's really important to experiment with different workflows, try different things for your animation to see what actually works for you because not everybody can work in this pose to pose approach to animation. It was very difficult for me to focus on my poses first and almost think about the animation after the fact. Poses are obviously very important to animation, but for me, I really don't care about the posing at the very beginning of my animation. For me, the most important thing is actually just figuring out the animation, right? We're creating and bringing things to life, so I wanna figure out how the characters are actually moving. How are they moving through 3D space? What is the timing? What is the spacing? And what is the actual flow of the animation? That for me is the most important thing for me to figure out as quickly as I possibly can. And then I can go in there and start thinking about the poses, start tweaking my poses and pushing poses where I need to. So with any animation that I create, I always try to start with video reference. And typically if I can, I'll try to shoot my video reference myself. And that's what I ended up doing in this case. I just went in the backyard, put up the camera and just started playing around with different two hit combo ideas until I landed on the one that you see here. And basically it's like a slash into the sort of throw of the weapon into like a stab to end it off. I probably just spent maybe 15 or 20 minutes playing around with different ideas, trying different things until I landed on something that I really liked. And I love shooting my own video reference just because I'm able to really feel out the action, really play around with different ideas and also create something exactly how I want it. Obviously if it's like a really technical, acrobatic, body mechanics heavy move that you really can't do yourself, you're flipping or you're needing to like flip around or do all these crazy actions, Typically, you're gonna to have to find that online, but I always try to, if I can, shoot it myself just so that I can feel out the action, understand what the body is actually going through, what are the things that I'm doing to actually create this action. And another reason to shoot your own reference is that really it's just a lot quicker. If you're finding video reference, oftentimes you're gonna to have to cut individual clips together to get the exact action that you want. So even if you have an idea of a two hit combo, if I was thinking, I wanna do a slash into a sword grab, stab that is very specific and it's going to take a lot of time to even find reference that kind of fits within that category you might have to find reference from movies or just youtube clips mash them together until you get sort of the reference that works for you and that can take a lot of time so again i wanted to give myself a pretty tight time constraint of eight hours under eight hours to do this so shooting my own reference was really important so once i'm happy with the video reference the next thing for me to do is to actually jump into maya and start animating. And then I know typically, especially when you're learning animation, it's always sort of like drilled in your head to plan, plan, plan. Do thumbnail sketches, plan some more, do some more thumbnail sketches, plan some more. Never jump into Maya until you know exactly what you're animating. You know exactly what key poses fall on what frame. You know exactly how long your animation is gonna be. That just really doesn't work for me and how I like to animate, just because I like to jump into Maya and really just have fun playing around with things. We're creating movement, we're creating life. The best way to do that is to just start doing that and just play around with timing, play around with spacing, play around with different movement ideas for your animation. And to do that, I create what is called a cube pass. So the first thing that I do is just basically drop in a box, shape it roughly the same size and shape as the character's torso. And then I just animate a cube. And for this, it's typically based off my video reference. So you can see if I play it here, the cube is moving roughly and doing what you saw in the video reference, but inside of Maya, and I'm really able to quickly play around with different timing ideas, play around with just the overall movement and almost shape this as if it were clay. I'm sort of just pushing and pulling this movement to get it to look the way that I sort of visualize it in my mind. And for this particular shot, I think it might've taken me 15, 20 minutes to create this cube pass. And already it gives me a really strong foundation 
that I can begin to build upon. So this just gives me a really strong base to start with. I'm already seeing the movement of my animation at the very beginning of the entire process, which for me is really important. So once I have the cube pass, the next thing for me to do is basically get the character rig following the movement of the cube. So that's what I've done here. I'll go ahead and unhide the geo layer for the rig and show the control curves. So you'll see basically the character is just following the movement of the cube. And it almost looks like this sort of like action figure movement. The arms aren't moving, the legs aren't moving. Everything is just following the movement of the main control or the cog control of the character. So to do this, basically what I've done is I wanted to make sure that the arms and the legs follow exactly the movement of the cog. So if I rotate the cog, the legs and the arms are going to follow along as well as the head. So to do that, basically, I just made sure that like for the foot controls, you can see follow space is set to the cog. So it's following the movement of the cog. The arms are not in world space, they're in local space. So again, they're following the movement of the body. So everything is sort of just following one to one with the cog control. And that gives me this almost like action figure pass that then I can start to build more and more detail on. And that's really where this sort of layered method comes in to this workflow. Again, I have the overall movement of my character established, even without really any poses other than the default idle pose that it's currently in. It's stuck into this pose, but immediately you can see the animation sort of starting to come together. We have the movement, we have the timing and the spacing, and we can always tweak those things as we continue working, but we have a really strong foundation that now we can just go in here and just start layering on more and more detail. And for me, that's just a much simpler way to think about animation. It was always really difficult for me to sort of think about animation in like this pose first idea and then start sort of like thinking about, okay, how am I actually going to move between these main key poses that I've created? This just allows me to think about the movement first, then think about the poses and refining the poses. But once you have a strong foundation of the movement in there, really it can start to really sort of dictate the animation and allow you to almost mold this as if it were clay and shape it like it were clay. You're going in here, you're working very quickly and just playing around with different ideas. And that's what I really love about this workflow. So the next thing for me to do is to do a leg pass. You can see the legs are going through the floor. They're obviously stuck in this one pose throughout the entire animation. So I really wanna make sure I get this grounded and doing a leg pass will really start to flesh out this animation. So to do this, what I wanna make sure that I do is get the feet back to world space so they're not following the cog control of this character. So again, if I move the cog, the feet are gonna follow along. Now, before I do that, Typically, I want to make sure that I'm happy with the movement of the cube and the movement of the character. You can see my cog control is just constrained to the cube. So what I would do if I'm ready to do a leg pass would just be to bake this down. I'll just do a smart bake. Bake the movement of the cog control and then just delete that constraint because I really don't need it there. I want to actually just start animating the character itself. I have my cube pass. It gave me what I need. Now I can just go in here and delete it. So if I delete the cube there, you can see it'll delete that constraint because that cube is no longer in the scene. And then now I'm actually ready to start animating the character itself. But you can see if I go in here and try to start animating the feet, they're always going to be following along the cog. So it's not really going to work. So I need to make sure that these feet are no longer following the cog. So to do that, what I want to do is shift select both of the foot controls, shift select the cog control. And now what I'm going to do is set a keyframe at all the same frames for the cog on the feet themselves. So you can see there aren't any really keyframes set in this animation for the feet. So what I'm gonna do is gonna select them, go through all the keyframes of this animation and just pressing S to lock a keyframe down. And just pressing S to lock a keyframe down for the foot controls, the same place that all the keyframes are for the cog. Now the reason I wanna do this is because I still wanna keep the feet moving the way they are. You can see that already they're doing the 180 along with the character. So I don't wanna just completely get rid of any of this foot animation. If I did, the feet would just be stuck at their main position, the body would be moving, and it would be really difficult to actually animate these feet. So I wanna keep the animation exactly what you see here on the feet, but I wanna bring them back so they're no longer following the cog. So to do this, I actually use a really helpful script here by Morgan Loomis. I'll link it in the description. His website also has a lot of other really helpful scripts, so highly recommend checking that out. But what this will do is basically bake your animation on your controls down to locators, so I'll do that. 
you can see it's gonna go through here. And since I set keyframes down, it's gonna go through all those keyframes, create locators, and I'll just scale them up here real quick. And now you can see these locators are following exactly the movement and the animation on the feet. So now all I need to do is go to the foot controls, under follow space, right click and just do break connections because there's actually keyframes on that. I don't really need that. I'll just set this to root. You can see the feet are gonna snap, but I'll select the locators, bake from locators. So it's taking the locator information, baking them back onto the control. And once it runs through this, you'll see I'll be able to animate the feet exactly how I want. So now that that's set, if I move the cog around, the feet are going to stay planted just like you would expect with IK legs. But now what I can do is go in here and I can start animating the feet. So right here, you can see the feet are picking up, which I don't really want. So with the Animbot tool, I'll just make sure that's snapped back to the last pose. And then just go through here straight ahead and just start animating the feet. So here, this foot, I probably wanna make sure it stays where it's at. This foot's picking up, but I probably actually don't wanna pick it up that much. I might actually lock it back down and then just lift it up just a little bit. But again, you can see that you already have the movement on the character in there. So when you're going through here and animating the feet, you kind of already know where they need to be placed based on the position of the character. So here, the character is pushing forward. I'd probably keep this foot just stuck there. It's pushing off that foot. This foot will probably be lifting. And I'd also be looking at the poses in my video reference to sort of get the idea for the foot poses themselves. But again, I would just go through this entire animation, do a really quick rough leg pass. And I'll go ahead and open up that scene so you can see sort of the finished leg pass. So in this scene, we have the finished leg pass and I'll play it here. You can see the legs are moving and they're sort of following what the poses we had in the video reference. They're also following just really the movement of the character that we have here. And this leg pass is pretty rough. We're not really thinking about much detail. We wanna lock this character down, but already, Doing a leg pass like this, you can really start to see your animation take shape. We really don't even have the upper body animated really much at all. We've really just animated the legs, but as soon as you get the legs locked down here, you can really start to visualize your animation. It's really starting to come together at this point. So really the next step I would take for something like this would be to begin animating the arms and the chest next. Again, taking this very like layered approach, slowly layering on more and more detail to the animation. So here we have the chest and arm pass. If I play it here, you can see I'm starting again to just layer on more detail, animating the chest and the arms based off what we shot in the video reference for the poses. And this just gives me a really strong foundation. It's still pretty rough for a lot of these poses, but I'm just, again, just sort of going pass by pass over the character and just layering on more details. So after the chest and arm pass, what I would probably do here is go through back over the legs and start animating the legs and the hips a bit more to sort of polish those up a bit more. You can see the legs are pretty rough. We actually don't really have the hips animated much at all, but you can see the legs are sort of just stepping through here. There's not a whole lot of detail on the legs. So now that I have the chest and arms animated, sort of roughly what they should be doing, then I'd go through here and animate the hips and the legs. So I'll go ahead and just open up that scene as well. And on this leg pass, you can see I started to animate the legs more, started animating the hips, especially for this sort of stab motion. I have sort of this like settle on the hips and the knees, as well as on the push off here, I've animated the, the toe and the heel just a bit more to get a little bit more detail in there. And again, this approach just really allows me to go in here and start tweaking poses, adding more detail, sort of on the fly. Again, this allows me to work almost as if it were like clay, which I really love. I really love just going in here, pushing things around, trying different things, as I go along. I'm not sort of like stuck to one particular idea. It's really important to give yourself that freedom to try things, experiment with things inside of Maya. And all the tools we have available for us in Maya, things like Animbot and just animation layers in general, the idea of just things taking too long in Maya, which is why you should like sketch out your poses before ever going to Maya, I feel like doesn't really apply that much nowadays when we're able to work so quickly inside of Maya with all the tools we have, it's really important for you to actually use them in your workflow to help you just animate faster. So at this point of the animation, there's a few things that I actually wanna tweak. So mainly the stab pose here, based again off the video reference pose, but I actually wanted to change this, tweak it, 
and have it be more of like a two-handed stab just to make more of a dynamic pose as well as just a stronger feeling pose into that stab. And then also the return to idle is way too long. There's like this double step that she does stepping back into idle. Thinking about this as if it were for a video game, you really wanna make sure that you're getting back to idle as quickly as possible. And also if you'll remember in the video reference, I did this sort of like twirl with the sword when I switched back to the right hand for the sword. That's something I ended up just not really putting in the animation. Again, thinking about a video game animation, you really wanna get back to idle as quickly as possible. So even though those flourishes might be cool, probably you'll just get rid of them just so you can get back to idle as quickly as possible. So after this pass, I wanted to go in here and start tweaking things as well as pushing some of the timing in some of these areas, making it a bit snappier. And as you're animating, you never wanna be afraid to really tweak things, change things for your animation. It's important not to really be married to any aspect of your animation because it can always change. So in this pass is when I changed up the stab pose, tweaked the timing a little bit, make it a little bit snappier on the grab, and then the actual stab motion. And then also I took out that extra step back to idle. So now she's just doing like one step back into that idle pose to sort of just get right back into the action. Again, if this were for a game, you would want to make sure that you're just getting back there as quickly as you can. At this stage of the animation, actually probably quite a bit before this was when I could take it out of Maya, bring it into the game engine and actually start testing it. And again, this entire animation from start to finish, shooting the video reference and actually animating was about a six and a half hour process. So probably even in the maybe three hour point of the animation, I could bring this out of Maya, throw it into engine, test it out and sort of play around and tweak timing and iterate on it. And this is why I really like this workflow because it allows me to iterate quickly and just work very quickly when I'm first focusing on the overall animation first, then sort of tweaking poses adding detail as I move along. So this is actually one of the final passes I did. There's like a hair pass as well as just a lot of refinement to the movement. Animated the camera, brought this cube in here to have, to give her something sort of to hit against. And you can see that this workflow really allows me to work quickly, getting to this point in about six and a half hours. Obviously there's lots of things that can be changed and tweaked and pushed, but you have a really strong foundation very quickly that you can start to really build upon. And just to show you something here, there's actually not a ton of animation layers in here, but you can see sort of like this final animation. I didn't bake any of the animation layers off in this scene file, so you can kind of see here all the different layers I have in this scene. Obviously, I'm really bad at naming, but when I'm tweaking poses, changing things, I'm just adding a layer, adding another layer, just playing around with different ideas on these different layers. Obviously, layers are all non-destructive, so it's a great way to, again, sort of work with your animation as if it were clay, play around and really be creative with it and try different ideas. So again, you can see all the different animation layers I have in here. I, again, they're not named, so I really don't know what each one does. So maybe I wouldn't take that for my workflow, but again, I'm trying to work really quickly. So I'm just constantly adding new layers and not really worrying much about naming at that point. Obviously there isn't one workflow that works for every single animator. There are people that work great following like a super planned out pose to pose approach to their animation. People like me, I really can't work that way. It's a hard way for me to visualize my animation and it's a really hard way for me to work quickly. So hopefully you're able to get at least something out of this video. And at the very least, you might be able to grab something in this workflow and just implement it into your own workflow.